Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I want to show you off my propagation bench. This one with some novel features. First of all, it uses ultrasonic fog to try to keep the cuttings from drying out. Second, I've installed a cheap Chinese diesel heater to do some air heating underneath the bench in an enclosed area. That is to keep the root zone in its optimum temperature for rooting. Third thing, of course, I've got some grow lights on here and I've tried to control the environment. I want to give you a close up of how this works. I did a preview of this while it was in its development stage. I'll link that video up here but let's get a closer look at how the cuttings are doing and how this thing works all right let's get a good look at the apparatus here so you can orient yourself as I'm looking going around the bench here these two bins here one on top one on bottom the bottom one is filled with water and there's an ultrasonic uh, fogger inside there that's pushing with a fan on the back end here this is the fan over here is pushing the fogged air or the, uh, the fog laden air through this long tube here. And you can see it has a good throughput all the way to the other end here, just with positive pressure pushing it out. And that on a warm day almost disappears uh, quickly as humidity is low, but here on a slightly cooler, wetter day, it does show up quite visibly. And underneath here, of course, the idea is to take the stress off the cuttings so they don't dry out so quickly. Down underneath here is that Chinese diesel heater. And you can see we've put a smaller air enclosure underneath the benches here. We've engineered it so there's a small air space. And then through this tube here, it comes around the far end here, pushes the air in through this side, that's the heated air. And then as I push down this side here, you're gonna see that the air return comes out through the far end over here and then returns back to the heater. So it's a closed loop pushing hot air across the bottom. Just cleared off a space on the bench here so you can see that underneath there is a clear polycarbonate panel. Uh, that is what allows the heat to transfer through quite easily. Back here underneath this cup is one of the sensors. That's a wireless sensor that connects all of this to my home automation software, and that can control the input of heat, uh, the lights, uh, all of that. On the front here, you'll see that we place some sort of wind screens. That's because it can be windy here on the back deck, and that just stops it from blowing all that mist or fog right off of the plants. Let's talk about the lights that are on these rails over here. And this is the one portion of the video that is sponsored. This is Barina. And instead of putting shop lights up here, I decided to go for actual horticultural lights. And what I didn't want to do is spend two or 300 getting those big panel lights on here. And for form factor, these fit just beautifully. So they do look like a shop light, but they're the spectrum that works for plants. And Barina does that at a pretty reasonable price. So I was happy to put their product onto the bench here. Let me pull one of these side panels out of the way so we can get a closer look at the cuttings now. These have been under the fog for about three weeks now in good conditions and uh, I feel like they're starting to pull back. I'll pull one out in just a second here, but it is no surprise that we got quick rooting on these. Good condition material, uh, mother plants that are, that are in happy condition and they go under fog favorable temperature conditions and I've put rooting hormone on the bottom of the plant and they are going to tend to root relatively quickly. So I'm just going to pull this out here. Actually, it's coming out with the whole soil block on there. But what I'm hoping to be able to show you is that there is, hang on, focus, focus, focus. There are roots across the bottom there, right to the bottom of the plug. So uh, that means we've got good progress on this tray here. Now that thing of dropping leaves, I'm going yellow and brown because of stress, is not unexpected, but it is not favorable in terms of an enclosed plant. And that's one of the reasons why I've gone to an open bench like this, is if I do this under a humidity dome and I end up with all these brown leaves dropping among the base of the plant, you basically have to be back under that dome every day pulling out and cleaning it up. What I can do on these ones here, obviously I get easier access, so I can go in here and do a cleanup uh, without opening a dome or anything like that. But the second thing is that even if they sit here for a while, uh, as some of these have, I probably haven't looked at this tray for a week, and it's dropped all those uh, all those brown leaves underneath down at the base of the, of the cuttings, and I haven't seen any significant rot. That's because there's excellent air circulation around these plants, and that's one of the big advantages of doing an open bench 
bench like this as compared to a humidity dome type system. Now, is this a, is this variety doing poorly? I would say not. Some of the things I'm seeing here are some positive signs. Um, and the best positive sign that you could probably expect here is to feel like there's some rooting. So let's have a look here. I can feel some rooting on this one. So yes, I'm going to be a little cheeky and, and, and go ahead and pull up. And there you go. I'm just going to pull that into the focus zone. And you can see there's good rooting maybe not right to the bottom of the plug on this one, but there's good rooting nonetheless, and that's a really good start. So I'm gonna gently put that back into place and I'm gonna let this one finish its job. Quick discussion now on temperature, humidity, and light. The temperature I'd like to have at the bottom of the bench here might be ideally somewhere in the range of 21 or 22 degrees Celsius. I'll put in Fahrenheit equivalents. Problem with the underbench heating is not that it doesn't heat well enough, it's that it can heat too well. I'll show you some numbers now, but basically within a few minutes of turning it on out this morning, I was able to get it up from about 16 degrees Celsius uh, into the 18 or 19 degree range, but then I left it alone for 10 minutes and it bounced up to 28 degrees on one end of the bench and maybe 21 or 22 on the other, meaning that basically if you leave it unattended, it can overheat fairly quickly, uh, which is why I've set this up to uh, integrate with my home automation and those sensors are going to be controlling the uh, underbench heating. Uh, in terms of humidity, I leave that humidity on all the time or that fog on all the time during the day. Nighttime, I turn it off and I'm kind of striving. I would love love to have in the range of 80% humidity, 90% humidity would be fine. But basically, I'm not looking for condensation on the leaves. I'm not looking for water droplets, so I don't want them wet all the time. That's going to increase rot. So basically, I'm just looking for it to not wilt. That's the, the point of the fog. Light. Now, this is the light up here, and if I point the camera directly at it, I'm going to end up losing the shot. Uh, but you can see I've got my lights on right now, but I don't leave them on all the time. This is a cloudy day and it's a bit dim out here. Um, so I'm using supplemental light only for those times when it's fairly dim, but otherwise ambient light outside, uh, even in a covered area like this, is just fine. The fixture itself for these lights is the Barina QL42 T8 Grow Light. You can see it's very similar to a shop light in its form factor, meaning I get lots of length on it here. Uh, and honestly, if you went out to buy a shop light, just a standard shop light at Home Depot, you might not do much better on price. And this one is actually geared for plants or plant growth. So what I'm appreciating is that it is a good budget option. Now, I, I should say this is probably not super waterproof up here. I don't think these connections are waterproof. Uh, but that's not the point on this system here because I'm just using fog out here. So I'm not splashing water on them or anything like that. And I don't use them all the time. I just use them for supplemental light. So it's a good solution for that. I think it's probably a good solution for seedlings as well. If you got early in the, in the, in the year and you just want to put up something temporary and a good feature and a good cost uh, for growing your seedlings and getting them some energy quickly, I think that's a nice form factor for it. And as I say, probably cheaper overall than going out to get a shop light. Well, that's probably a pretty good overview of my propagation bench setup. I, I will be straightforward with you and say that I didn't move all of my propagation into this bench straight away. Just for the sake of not putting all my eggs in one basket, I'm still going with the humidity dome setup that I showed you in previous videos here as an old and reliable way of doing a lot of small scale propagation for my perennials and my roses. Uh, this is kind of in that awkward stage of being fun, but not quite ready for prime time. So as I fine tune it throughout the season, I'll probably give you some updates on this as well as videos using the tried and true humidity dome methods. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them down into the comments below the video and I'll see what I can do to help.